Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here. Today, I'm going to share with you our experience using Agile and OpenBeam approaches in scan to beam works. My name is David Delgado Vandrell. I'm an architect and BIM consultant. I am running uh, my own BIM consultancy in Barcelona, Catalonia. I am also um, uh, sharing part of my time as a lecturer in different educational uh, programs. Uh, I am also um, part of the board of Building Smart Spain and also collaborating in different international um, uh, projects within the framework of Building Smart International. I am also uh, part of the BIM uh, user group in Catalonia and representing uh, Building Smart Spain uh, in Construim uh, el Futur, which is um, a, a group who is trying to define the roadmap to implement BIM within the region of uh, Catalonia. Today, what to spec uh, about the next uh, minutes? So I will try to share uh, my experience, my business experience, just to uh, highlight uh, these uh, four key points. So I will try to make you understand uh, the OpenBeam workflow within an actual uh, use case, a real one. We will learn the basics of uh, Agile uh, methodologies. We will also learn how to use the point cloud objects efficiently uh, to increase your modeling performance within the Archicad, uh, the Graphics of Archicad platform. And uh, we will also try to demonstrate how uh, some other OpenBeam standards, such as the BCF standard, becomes an efficient uh, communication mean. So before that, just a little disclaimer. Uh, well, because we are mentioning the topic of uh, Agile, Mm, by the way, I'm not uh, any Agile certified expert or Scrum master, but uh, the last years uh, I've been researching on that and I'm uh, trying to implement uh, some of these key aspects from these methodologies, Agile methodologies from the software development into the uh, construction sector. We have implemented it in our own businesses, but also in within our uh, clients. So coming directly from our experience. So this is the disclaimer that I wanted to show you here. So let's jump directly into our work framework setup. As I mentioned, uh, we uh, have as our main framework, um, the OpenBeam, but well, I'm pretty sure that most of you already know what is OpenBeam and so on. So I will go very quickly, but just in case there's someone who wants to just to see which part of this framework we are trying to apply here. So this is the typical workflow in which there's uh, some native environment that is producing information containers. Traditionally, we uh, produce different types of outcomes, uh, such as layouts or spreadsheets, whatever. And if we are uh, lucky enough, we will have some kind of single source of information repository. Uh, sometimes it's called, if it's so uh, a common data environment, sometimes it's just a cloud repository, whatever, okay? But what happened in the, uh, within the OpenBeam workflow? Well, besides the traditional documentation, what we are producing is also this type of outcomes called OpenBeam outcomes. In, in, in particular, we are uh, transferring information based on an open data schema called IFC. And we are using the traditional um, strategy, which is the reference model which means that we are uh, taking uh, information containers and information models from other disciplines, um, and we are using them as a reference to keep developing our own uh, information containers, right? And uh, we are creating and uh, producing those information containers um, towards uh, particular BIM uses. Well, this is how BIM uh, methodology more or less works. And once we have all these uh, information containers, we are using them uh, to design, to track, to build, whatever. Uh, we are checking them. We are reviewing them. There's some people who is validating them and some others are approving them. Whatever is happening um, within those information containers, there's an efficient way to communicate what, what's going on inside them in order to uh, check them and to validate them. So we are using here another um, uh, open beam standard, which is called BCF. And then we will make a change request, if it's so, to the original author. So this is the cycle uh, in the main, uh, you know, within the main open beam uh, workflow, okay? Uh, 
But additionally, as we mentioned within the title of the presentation, we are uh, we also apply agile methodologies, but not for all of our projects. Uh, mm, we applied in, in in those projects in which we consider that this methodology or this framework or whatever you want to call it, uh, it uh, fits to our needs and not just ours, our client needs. So. This is the typical, uh, I'm pretty sure that ma many of you have seen this uh, diagram before, but this is the typical Agile, uh, sometimes a sub methodology of Agile called Scrum. Uh, it's, it's a bit more um, uh, detailed, uh, but this is the typical diagram in which you can see the core of this uh, approach, which is working by iterations, working by cycles uh, in a way that uh, what we have in mind, our main goal, is to uh, track what's our uh, product increment in terms of what what's our client expecting from what we are delivering. And traditionally, we are using within our industry an approach which is called the waterfall, which is sequential, in which there's some guy that studied a lot and has a lot of a lot of experience, and is designing. It. A, 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 a roadmap totally defined even and he or she is telling us what will happen in the next months and even years you know so you you will know what will happen in the week number 52 and the thing is that w once you are in the week number 52 something different from what this girl or guy told you is happening right so what's happening there so there are other methodologies that that, that, that comes from other uh, disciplines such as the software development and so on that uh, within this digital era uh, fits our needs within the construction sector. And this is called Agile. And of course, this presentation will not go deeply on here. So for those ones that they know a bit more uh, uh, about Agile, they will find some uh, you know, known uh, topics. And for others, it will be something like pretty new to start uh, learning uh, on, you know? So, well, we will go through this um, uh, using our, uh, the different slides, okay? So let's keep in mind here that it is a, an iterative uh, approach, working by cycles, always trying to deliver value uh, in, uh, to our client. And this is the goal, our client and the value, nothing else. So, as we are working, uh, applying uh, the BIM methodology, uh, well, we have to answer to some initial client requirements. And well, the established way to answer uh, to those requirements is using a, a BIM execution plan. Uh, so we are a small company. Well, they pay us what we think that we deserve and we are quite happy on that. But uh, of course we want to produce something that it's suitable for everybody and which is useful. So we try to produce documents that are as simple as possible. Okay, so this is a, just a spreadsheet. We use it uh, as the backbone of our BIM execution plan and we share it with the client and the, our client knows exactly what uh, uh, can expect uh, from what we deliver. Okay, so we jump there, mm, the typical things within a, a BIM execution plan. I will not uh, go through that, of course. Uh, so uh, just to highlight here that, of course, in general, in IECO industry, uh, we, we are working always uh, under some uh, process-driven um, uh, frameworks, you know. Uh, so our activity here, and especially the use case that we want to show you here, which is a scan to beam project, uh, it's, it's also a process-driven activity uh, in which we have a quite strict, as you will see, um, a quality management strategy here uh, from our internal side, but also from the uh, from our client uh, side, you know. So this is just a typical diagram in which we are doing uh, or performing a model checking. Also, uh, we are using a master information delivery plans uh, shared with our clients. Uh, we are using metadata. In, in particular, we are using Microsoft SharePoint here to um, uh, populate all these different types of metadata. We are trying to use um, uh, some standards from the UK 
uh, environment, uh, although we are working not just in Spain or Catalonia, also internationally in different countries such as uh, Switzerland or Israel and, and so on. So we are trying to use this framework, which is quite suitable for us and for most of our clients that are coming from different nationalities, it, it works fine. Um, so this is our workflow for the scan to beam projects in particular. We are, we're doing different types of projects, but scan to beam is one of our specialities. And we are working with other collaborators as many other companies. And here, what we are doing, it's gathering the different uh, information point loads uh, and we are processing them using different tools. And <clears throat> our uh, native uh, environment, it's uh, graphics of Archicad mainly. And uh, this shows you how to use it in combination with other tools uh, or plugins, in, in this case, are tools connected to uh, this native environment. And um, this is how this, uh, uh, well, it's not a suite, but this uh, group of different tools uh, are um, dealing with um, scan to beam projects. Or this is all how we try to use it. One key aspect that I want to highlight here is that we always try as much as we can to use the out of the box uh, features, mm, you know, uh, and sometimes it's not easy because the out of the box, it's too simple. So we are trying to um, uh, take um, uh, out the most of our tools using the out of the box. Uh, features here. And what we will show you, it's using those out of the box ones. But of course, there are many other plugins within the market that you can apply and so on, of course, and some of them we already know them. This is the by default features. Um, and finally, because we are working within that uh, open beam framework and our client specs that we deliver them, uh, different information containers based on the um, open data schema uh, IFC, we will deliver different IFC files. Okay, um, uh, from the collaborative, uh, uh, well, um, uh, side, these are different, let's say, uh, tool uh, sets or collaboration platforms that we are using for different uh, types of activities or areas. Um, from the side of information containers, we are using different um, uh, 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 cloud repositories these ones are from the Microsoft environment, which is the one that we are mostly using, although we are using other ones, but these are the main ones, because uh, it enables us to use at least uh, SharePoint in particular, uh, that metadata uh, um, layer that we are using um, uh, along with our clients, okay? Uh, and it's one that it's quite aligned uh, to the ISO 19650. Then um, for the issue management, as I mentioned, uh, we are uh, using different uh, issue, well, different different because in some other projects we are using other tools, but mainly we are using Bing Collab from, from the Netherlands and also using triggers, as you can see here in the center of the slide, we are combining that uh, with other communication uh, channels such as uh, the email, uh, our email or the, the our client's email and so on. But, well, where is the Agile uh, layer here? Uh, well, it's within the uh, process itself. But from the perspective of which is the tool or environment that um, allows us to uh, deploy uh, the, some of the Agile um, uh, aspects here? Well, uh, in our case, we use a, a tool from the Microsoft environment, which is uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps, and in particular, Azure Boards. And we are combining it uh, and bidding it within the collaborative hub, uh, Microsoft Teams. As you can see here, it's a quite Microsoft, um, uh, you know, uh, oriented uh, um, uh, uh, diagram here, but you could use this, uh, a quite similar approach using other, other type of tools, of course. This is just a, a, an option. Um, and this is how it uh, it looks once you are in the micro in the Microsoft Teams. Uh, and here is an, uh, an agile driven uh, dashboard uh, that we have customized for different types of projects. In particular, this is for the uh, scan to beam projects in which uh, we can see at a glance uh, what's uh, going on in terms of active tasks, uh, active user stories, um, uh, what is approved, what not, uh, 
etc. Everything is here. Different requests for change, whatever. Well, it's a dashboard, uh, but you can customize it uh, pretty well. And it's in combination with your collaborative and communication uh, hub, uh, in this case, Microsoft uh, Teams. Mm, and who is the people involved within this um, uh, within this type of projects? So, well, we call it agile people because we are applying agile here, but uh, uh, it's our client. In particular, our client, it's not the end client because we have another end client, not directly, we, which in particular it's the, are the asset owners or in some cases design firms. Uh, but our client is a project management company and also specialized in laser scanning around the world. And then what we are um, performing here is the role of product owner, which is some kind of, well, um, uh, function that the agile methodology um, or the agile approach um, uh, describes, uh, which in general, it's the one who knows about uh, the product that you are dealing with in your uh, contract, you know. So we are the ones that we know the part of the client, but also we know how to produce what the client is uh, requiring us, you know. So in this case, because it's a small one, we don't have another person uh, performing that. We are our own uh, companies assuming that uh, role. But at the same time, of course, we are the producing team. Uh, we are the ones that are producing those uh, deliverables, okay. And in parallel, we have other stakeholders. In particular, they are helping us to manage some uh, particular point loads uh, that due to its level of complexity or whatever, uh, they are also helping us uh, to process them, okay? So this is just to understand, and for us, this is a quite important slide here to understand how we apply uh, Agile here. And this is a scan to beam project we have some different types of scan to beam projects, uh, sometimes for the design um, stage, sometimes for the construction stage, and uh, sometimes for the operations and maintenance. So depending on which stage you are performing, uh, this diagram could might be a bit different. But uh, in general, what we are doing is um, going through different time boxes. So uh, remember that I mentioned that uh, Agile is a, uh, an approach that uh, proceeds using different iterations. We call those iterations sprints, time boxes. So it's a box of time, nothing else. And we are producing things. There's, uh, uh, therefore, there's a product increment through time. And usually we deliver initially a prototype. This prototype will be checked by our client. It's not everything. It's just a mock-up, something uh, the minimum viable product that will enable our client uh, to understand if what we will do the next weeks or month will be what he specs, you know, and, and in this case, uh, uh, native files, but also IFC ones, even uh, DWG, whatever it's required. In general, these are the formats that we are delivering. And uh, there's a standby because, of course, for the client to check all this, they need time. So we stop our uh, production uh, during that week, that two weeks, because from here uh, might come some thing that uh, it's full of changes, and usually it, it's what it happens. So these are uh, the feedback. This is the feedback from our end client, but also from on our from our direct client. So it's a combination of the feedback from the client that we are even we don't know who is. Uh, uh, directly and from our client directly. And they are providing us this feedback using BCF. So we have delivered IFC and they are connecting to that uh, issue management um, cloud hub and they are uh, communicating with us directly using the information containers using BCF. And what we do, the first part of the second screen, the second time box, we are producing uh, the response to those particular uh, new requirements, the, these initial feedback. Once we have uh, accomplished that, and this is fixed, we uh, produce another BCF uh, communication just to confirm our clients that this is fixed. And then we keep uh, working 
on uh, what was expected uh, when we were planning the different sprints, which is called the sprint planning and so on. But uh, this is how Agile works. So we will uh, reach the end of our sprint number two, and we will proceed the same way, um, uh, some other feedback, which means that our product increment will go backwards a bit just because we cannot go um, uh, towards the end because first we have to fix what it, it but the good thing here is that because we are working in small time boxes these time boxes usually are from one week to until two in our case but it could be maximum four weeks you know so it means that um, well we can produce a lot of work uh, our product implement um, could be a lot of work but always uh, at the, the, the maximum work that we can produce within one week or two, which means that it's quite affordable when someone uh, uh, asks us to um, uh, 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 modify something uh, and whatever. This is why this backward uh, product increment is not very, very uh, big. Okay, And until the end, depending on how many sprints we have, until the end of the contract. Okay. So uh, now I will show you how uh, this was, um, uh, how we, we do it. And this is what tools uh, we are using uh, to deliver all this and how it looks. Um, this is very simple. Most of you probably, we, we are already working uh, using point clouds, of course, and these are uh, different tools to, to process them. Initially, uh, trying to align what is coming from our uh, client, uh, and, uh, we have a client that is always providing us black and white uh, point clouds. We know that this is not the op op optimal ones, but we are quite used to work even with white, uh, black and white. It's cheaper, and for us, it's quite even um, uh, well interesting to work on, on this uh, in combination with 360 images as well. And um, mm, once the, everything is processed, uh, we also uh, mm, clean uh, of noise all of these point clouds. This is quite typical when you are working with uh, point clouds here. And, um, and what we do here, because we are working in Archicad, uh, well, uh, we have some constraints uh, regarding the size of those point clouds that we will embed uh, within the uh, native environment, uh, which is uh, two gigabytes at maximum. Uh, so uh, we have to split all those point clouds um, per different uh, information containers, uh, maximum two gigabytes. And we export them to uh, E57 format. Uh, these are some of the requirements uh, that we uh, agreed with the client regarding uh, tolerances uh, with uh, hard and flat surfaces or an even ones. Uh, and well, this is some something that mm, uh, might happen uh, sorry, might change uh, depending on which type of project or, or, or which client. Of course, this is not a general or universal rule. For us, this is something that we agreed uh, years ago, and uh, it works for the type of information contentions that our client is expecting. Um, these are, well, this is how it looks generally for some of our clients, how their information requirements looks like. So look, uh, it, it it could uh, uh, seem that this is quite, well, not quite technical. For us, it's fantastic because it's quite graphical. And maybe it's not using any kind of uh, beam for you, LOD or whatever, uh, which we don't like, uh, by the way. But it's quite easy. Level one, level, level two, and level three, that's all. And they are using uh, images to highlight whatever they expect to be modeled and not and so on. This is perfect for us. It's very visual and for them. So we are talking... Uh, a quite um, a, a language that we understand from the both sides, uh, you, know, you know, because sometimes we, the technicians, we, we, we tend to use quite complicated or complex uh, uh, language. And here we have achieved some quite of balance level and we are quite um, happy to, 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 to have achieved that. Um, uh, so, yeah, these are the, uh, the different information containers here within our platform. And you can see here the sizes, how we, uh, which is our naming convention. I'm pretty sure that you are already used to that. 
on um, and this is how we uh, handle the terrain uh, so uh, we are using other tools such as in this case rhinoceros and uh, grasshopper and this is how well different algorithms that we have to uh, to use quite simple ones uh, we uh, but well whatever we we have to do uh, we we try to achieve it and um, uh, this is how uh, we work within the Archicad uh, environment. Uh, so Archicad has the feature of importing directly E57 and XYZ uh, files. So we uh, importing them. Sometimes we have to work with different coordinates depending on the, the project. This is different. Um, uh, but usually we have to work, uh, as you can see here, uh, which not always is the, the optimal as you as you already know but well depending on the client and the project on uh, we are using the layering system uh, within Archicad uh, to, uh, to 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 manage uh, the the point clouds uh, when we hide them when we show them because we want to keep our performance using that uh, software in a quite high ratio otherwise uh, our and delivery uh, time, uh, well, uh, could be, you know, uh, jeopardized. And, um, well, this is uh, how it looks as in any other uh, beam authoring uh, environment uh, that allows to import uh, point codes, right? Uh, and this is some of the hardware that you are using with our left hand. Um, this is pretty, pretty uh much uh, one of our key <laughs> hardwares uh, to work quite easily uh using point loads and uh and this is how the performance in real time uh, uh looks what we are doing is to create different planes cut planes uh, different ranges agreed with the, our client um, and this is how we handle the different tolerances that uh, on the Z uh, values we can find. Okay, so this is how we uh, proceed uh, with that. Depending on the project, of course, uh, with the building projects, we are using uh, the Z uh, um, uh, within a, a story, but with infrastructure ones, uh, we are doing the same, but uh, longitudinally uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, the alignment. And... Um, and then we are using some internal uh, uh, quality assurance uh, techniques, in this case, some graphic overwrite combinations uh, to uh, check, um, you know, uh, the different uh, clash detection, which is not automated. Uh, of course, this is totally visual. There are other tools uh, outside Archicad that already, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, work on, on that, you know. But as I mentioned, we are using the out of the box uh, features from our authoring tool. And well, we are finishing. Uh, this is because I uh, mentioned that this is a process driven activity in which quality management is one, it's, uh, uh, one of the most important tasks here uh, from our side, but also from the client side. So um, we are using BCF as our main, let's say, tool, but it's not a tool, it's a standard and it uses different environments. But this is the structure of that communication package uh, in which it's very, very parameterized, in which we can find uh, different parameters, such as the issue type, which uh, priority, severity, uh, which area belongs uh, that particular issue? Who, uh, uh, the, uh, who is the um, assigned uh, person to the, uh, to handle that issue? Whatever uh, deadlines, whatever you want to keep it here, it will be kept. Also, um, the uh, different coordinates from the camera that is taking the screenshot from that particular point of view that you want to share. Uh, also, selecting the different. Uh, objects within uh, the model uh, and if you want to um, track them you can use uh, their ID whatever and you will use an international uh, standard which means that there are different tools that will understand this type of communication package this is the advantage here we are not forcing our client to use this we also deliver the VCF file independently so they will be able to use it outside this 
issue management hub that belongs to some Dutch company, of course. So this is the advantage here. And this is how our uh, outcomes look like. Uh, and here we also are using, for example, the different filters that different tools, such as the Vincolab one, uh, uh, um, allows us uh, to use. Uh, but any tool have uh, similar uh, approaches here. So we are trying to use the smart views in particular, this kind of uh, filter uh, to highlight where is the lack of source information. So we are using IFC here. This is a particular uh, use case to highlight and to show our client what we will model regarding what we have find within those point clouds, you know. So, of course, you have to create a lot of different parameters and um, and uh, uh, build your information model using them in order to achieve this once you are uh, sharing um, IFC files. And these are the traditional outcomes that also um, uh, come as a result of all that work. Uh, so usually they also uh, ask us to deliver DWG files in which, um, as much as we can, we who also want to uh, include there uh, using uh, the layering um, system, uh, which are those elements that, uh, well, are using a different type of uh, um, accuracy or uh, it's something that we have modeled, but it shouldn't, it, it wasn't uh, within the initial point code, whatever, you know? So this is how we work and this is how uh, our client expects um, us to deliver it. And uh, yeah, and finally, if uh, we are lucky, everything is delivered, approved, and we have a happy client, and yeah, and hopefully uh, they pay us. So thank you very much. Uh, if uh, there's some, uh, there are some questions, I uh, will be very happy to, to answer them. And uh, thank you, Ralph, and the rest of the team to allow me to uh, talk our experiences here. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.